Hello, welcome to Alternative Radio Cardiff. I'm here, joined with Terry Matthews for the part two of the interview. And I'm also joined with his uh, son, uh, Dean, who is uh, also a singer. So, um, we've just been discussing uh, some of the stories about this club. I know Dean's got a lot to uh, add to this as well. So, Dean, can you tell us a little bit more about some of the, the talent that comes through the doors of the 147? Oh, it's been amazing. Um, you get it. You, you just know why you're just going to walk through the doors sometimes when they have open mics or jam sessions. You, you'll have people coming in, amateurs who can play bass, other people from other bands, and they seem to all gel and mix together. And I think that's how another band was formed, by musicians meeting up. It's like a musician's place to come to, but you can be at any level. You can be expert, professional, do it for a living, or just practice in your bedroom and want to come somewhere in a nice environment where you're not stressed out and there's no pressure on you. So you were telling me uh, just a few moments ago about an act who, who came in with a plastic saxophone and, and blew the whole place away. Yeah, you, you told me about him. I didn't see him, but you were saying he was brilliant, wasn't he? From Portugal? Yeah. Yeah, for Portugal, yeah. yeah. Oh, fair play, did Fine he? That stuff. It was amazing. Did he have the place on their feet, did he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you said he was really good. He I? was really good. Really you had, good. And you get quite a few people who like, in like music college as well, and they want to try their own music or something. You had a woman coming in with like a cello, was it? Yeah, a cello. And she done like a jam session with the band, so she would join in with like classic rock and pop songs, playing a cello. It's like... This is mad. This is, it sounds like the perfect place to so relax. get exposure. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait to work with you guys um, more closely. But um, Dean, going back to you, mate. So could you tell us a little bit more about your music career? Because I know you, you've got quite a lot of stuff going on. Or you did have quite a lot yeah. of stuff going on. It's all been uh, cancelled now. But we, we, I moved in here when my dad bought the place. I was 10. And we only had the one part of the club because it's two buildings. And we built the bottom bar, we dug it out by hand with the uh, travellers, built it, and then we opened the bar down there. And um, I think I was about 13 years old, and um, I was amazed at how music changes people and how you can change an atmosphere. In between the break, when we used to have an Elvis singer every Friday, Tommy Parry was his name, wasn't it? Yeah. Scott Hayward was his stage Tommy name. He's, he was classic Elvis singer, and he was very popular around here. So he would um, popular in Porth Call as well. I'm, uh, I'm yeah, guessing. yeah. He goes to all them. He was really quite popular. In between the break, when I started off, I must have been twelve, thirteen years old. I was, I was just amazed that people could get up and dance and then sit back down. And I was watching it all, and I was like, "There's something missing here." Because in the break, there was no music. So my friend was a DJ. He was a little bit older than me, and he used to. And so I went up his house, and we made some mixes on a tape from records cooling the gang and I'd play the mixes in between the break when Tommy would have a break so everybody would get back up and dancing so at like 12 and 13 there was a bit of pressure on to get the right tunes because I'd be out Saturday putting this tape mix together a pause mix and doing it live there was no computers there no nothing so that was like your first introduction my yeah. first introduction to DJing and I loved it because I was like 13 I'd go behind the bar press play we'd pre-do this mix cooling the gang and some party music Having to be get up dancing. I bet, I bet the women were loving you, were they? Were they all coming up to you asking for requests and things like that? Yeah, you couldn't do it then because I had no record, <laughs> just the tape <laughs> and the tape deck yeah. and the speakers downstairs wired in. So we press that, but we'd do a mix where there was no pause in it. Because back in the day, then CDs had only just come out, so you couldn't. Re you, you only had now, now some, now one or now two. No, <laughs> it's like now 104. And um, so if you, my mate, because he had all the records, we could mix them live in his bedroom on his um, twin mixer deck, not CDs on a thing, they're not CG days and G's or whatever they are. C D J's now, innit? Yeah, that's right. It was um it was literally records and then we'd mix that together and play it in the bottom bar. So what was the music uh that really inspired you uh to get going in, in, to get into the DJing in the first place? Um well I used to hire music videos from the music shop when you used to go to the shop to hire VHS videos it's going back in the day blockbusters yeah and before it was DVD it was video yeah, yeah. and you'd get uh, fined if you didn't rewind the tape back this is old, <laughs> this is old school <laughs> that is old school fair I play. think it was 25p fine I remember you know, those days rewind it back it was back and um, when 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 a lot of the guys used to come in here to play pool and stuff they were starting to go clubbing and I was a lot younger I was about 13 14 did you get a fake ID no, but I seen them all dressed up nice and they would tell me what town was like and how good it was and dancing and all the latest music 
they would listen to. So they started explaining to me what it was like the Pesh Mode route and Human League. It was a big thing in the 80s. And they were called trendies then. And they'd come in, you'd have like a long beige trench coat, dressed very smart. You'd have to wear a tie to town. Yeah. You'd have to wear a jacket. I remember borrowing my brother's like and uh, double-breasted suit just to get into one of the clubs when I was 16. So I used to see them and then they told me about bands, gave me a tape by Depeche Mode. And I listened to it and listened to it. And I went to the video shop and hired the concert, which was in Hamburg in probably 1982. 1983 it was filmed. And I was amazed by it. So when I used to clean up the club and help in the morning cleaning up, I cleaned the bottom bar, Hoover and things. I put the video on and I'd watch it and start learning the songs from there. I love Depeche Mode. It's quite a timeless sound as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they're good. They are. They've, they've moved along now. They're more rock. But I like the stuff they did then as well and now. So, from DJing then, where did you, uh, so I, like I know you kind of, your career grew from there, so where, where did you go after the DJ? Um, after, well, what happened is then, at about 19, um, I left working here, and then I went to work in some bars, I worked on the wharf when it just got built, it's been knocked down now, <laughs> so old I am, and then from there I went and spent four years in a nightclub in town, which was a big one. It was um, Zeus at the time when it just got built. It burnt down, and uh, I opened it up. I used to get eighteen hundred people in a night, and uh, I was working like bar supervisor, cellar manager, stock manager. I'd have a full time job then a day, doing all the bars, and then I'd work the odd night. And um, I worked there for four years. And after watching sort of like how nightclubs operate, I decided to go off and be a mobile DJ and bring that sort of like kind of party nightclub flavour into the mobile world because it was a bit cheesy back in the day everything was called road show and like the guys used to turn up in like suits and 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 like they just play the music they liked and i had this vision of like mixing songs being a bit louder more lighting and creating like sort of parties for different ages and it took me a while to get used to all the music because they know a lot about motown reggae and then i went from there and brought my own version of it and then i branched out to karaoke and then i started singing and then I went into joining the band, and then I do, like now, solo singing, karaoke, or DJ. So you put a bit, of, a bit of everything out there to kind of please, please everyone who's coming to, along to your nights. Yeah. So a question for you now, Terry: How was it watching Dean, uh, Dean's music career go along, and, and watching him grow, and uh, going from a DJ to a club singer? How did, uh, how did that make you feel? It was amazing, but he wouldn't work me then. He was too. <laughs> he wanted payment. Oh, no way. I'm sure you could have blackmailed him or something. <laughs> I did. I did black. <laughs> but no, it was a great, great feeling to watch him grow through the environment of what he was. So, um, Dean, what I want to ask you next is um, where is your music career at the moment and how has the lockdown uh, affected affected it? It's, it's destroyed it. it, it, it overnight, it was like a bomb hit it and it blew up and there was nothing left. And it's It's weird. So it's difficult to get like motivation to come singing in, on your own in the club because I can get access into you. But when there's no sight of, in you know, what's going to happen in the future, I'm waiting to hear, you know, that it gets lifted, the restrictions, and then I can start going forward. But um, my singing career is like a mixture between sort of DJing, karaoke, and solo singing. I'd rather do more singing, but if more work comes in DJing, I'll do that as well but um I was going quite well I was I was working for Brains and singing solo in some of their pubs as well as DJing and I had a few more other contracts that was um looking good and then all of a sudden boom it's all stopped so Dean is there anything in particular that uh we at Alternative Radio can do to help you and uh, our, our listeners is there anything you you'd, you'd like from us um, yeah, well, we're based at the club. I run a, my own DJ business called Sound to Lights Mobile Disco, karaoke slash solo singing. Are, are you on uh, I- I social media or anything? Yeah, or? I'm on Facebook. I've got a page on there, Sound to Lights Mobile Disco. If they search that or Dean Matthews, they'll see me there. And so make sure you give that a follow. Yeah, and we're based at the club, so we've got a perfect venue if you want to book a party, whether it's just a disco, singing, karaoke, or combination of three can do anything like that and um i do a little bit different like 80s upwards so it's a little bit different to your normal singers i'm not really a cabaret act as such i do like a lot of stuff which you all you'll know like pet shop boys the mode erasure and then it goes into like queen killers phonics and a bit of everything like but it's not so much the motown reggae it's a bit more 80s and upwards and a bit more that you can dance to 
rather than sort of listen to, you know, so not so many ballads, a bit more jumpy round music like I found popular. It sounds great, Dean. I cannot wait till uh, we're allowed back in the 147 to listen to you play, mate. Uh, so what we're actually going to do for Dean, we are going to uh, post some live videos of him playing on our Instagram and our, our Facebook site. So that's uh, Alternative Radio Facebook and our Alternative Radio Instagram. So guys, our studio in our studio. Just me. Thanks for getting that in there for us, Josh. So uh, yeah, guys, head over to our, head over to our Facebook and Instagram, and be sure to like and share Dean's. Uh, videos and support live acts do and and the 147 during this hard time guys we can do it all together uh, th uh thank you so much for coming on there on the show show boys that's uh terry matthews in uh and dean matthews thank you ever so much boys thank you very much you're welcome